Welcome to lesson five. This may be the most important lesson out of all the lessons you've learned so far. Remember, in the first lesson, we talked about the importance of relaxing and focusing as a foundation to being more productive in your life. And the second lesson, we talked about being able to ask these three important questions, being able to know where we're going the what, why, and how. And the third lesson, we talked about a way to overcome the inevitable procrastination that really steals our hours and dreams out of our life. And in the fourth one, we talked about being more resilient, realizing that there's inevitable obstacles along the way and how we can inevitably ask ourselves what we're needing and allow those obstacles to be our greatest teachers. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the fact that you're not solo in this. Even if you're a solopreneur, you're not on this alone, on this journey alone. There's people around you and things around you that are influencing your energy to feel more nourished and inspired or more depleted and tired. There was a a time for me where I completely lost my focus. Uh, I moved away from my old tribe that was there um, when this was a time that I was talking to you about where I was working hard and playing a whole lot harder. And I, I realized that I was, if I continued the way I was going. I don't know if I would have even lived to be here to do this course for you today, really. And and I completely lost my focus on what mattered. And what I inevitably did was I moved away from my old tribe, the tribe that I was with, that I was parting with so much, and into a new tribe that was much more inspiring. People who wanted to live alongside their values. Uh, and they were way more value-aligned, supportive, And that is actually inevitably where I found my wife. I looked for mentors, people who could show me that I could live in a particular way and who were living in that particular way, more mindfully, more with a greater sense of heart, a greater sense of focus. I continued to build the connection with people in my life, both personally and professionally, who wanted to walk this path and who wanted to be successful in it. Albert Einstein said, a human being is part of the whole, called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. I credit my success, both personally and professionally, with surrounding myself with the right mentors and the right people to help influence the implicit decision-making of my brain the implicit energy that's there to be more focused and be more productive on what matters to me. Disconnection, not being connected, not feeling connected, disconnection is the mother of imbalance. The consequences of feeling disconnected in our lives, anxiety, depression, addiction. You want people around you who are going to inspire you, support you, challenge you. You want the fast track to mastery, the fast track to focus and productivity, Find a peer, find a mentor or a coach who's been there before who can support you. In the last lesson, I talked about the change journey. I talked about the inevitable ups and downs that are there. When I was writing The Now Effect, I was really stuck at one point. I've talked about various various reasons why I was stuck in the beginning of writing that book, but at some point I was stuck. Something wasn't flowing, and I, I had written like 80% of the book already. And I connected with an old mentor of mine who reminded me that there was an element missing from the book that was at the core of who I was, and that was this element of play. He said, where's the playfulness behind this book? It seems too serious. What's so important to you is this element of play. He inspired that in me because he was in my circle of people. He was someone who I was connected with. I went on with a whole new sense of energy and invigoration to move through and complete that book. And as you'll see through that book and through Uncovering Happiness, there's a huge thread of play. Because play is at the epicenter of being more flexible in our lives, being more interested, being more curious. It's a key pillar of our own happiness. All animals, all mammals are social species. We're a social species. You look at apes or you look at wolves or you look at dolphins or you look at whales. These are all social species. We're in this together. There's a clan and we do this for evolutionary reasons. It's about survival. If you're out in the wilderness all on your own, 
you're not going to make it. You're more likely to be lunch. But if you had a clan and a tribe around you, you have people who got your back. You have people who are going to support you. This is built into our evolutionary makeup. But now, in this time of modernity, we have much more disconnected environments. I call them impoverished environments. I don't care if someone's living in a gated community within a giant, with giant mansions everywhere. If, if these are like separated places and spaces, to me, they're impoverished. It's a disconnect that's happening on a social level. You remember that song that came out a long time ago, maybe, or if you're not familiar with it, it went something like, little boxes on the hilltop, little boxes made a ticky-tack, little boxes on the hilltop, and they're all made just the same. They're little boxes of separate cubes that are there, of people not connecting with each other. People don't know their neighbors anymore. They don't know uh, there's a disconnection amongst people and loneliness is on the rise. And loneliness is one of the greatest diseases that we have. When we feel connected, when there's a sense of touch even that's there, it calms our nervous system. There's a study that came out quite a while ago where a person was, a woman was put into, or different women were put into a fMRI machine, which measure, measured the blood flow in their body and their brain. And, and they had a little ankle bracelet that they put on their ankles and the ankle bracelet shocked them. And everyone self-selected into this study. And what they found was that when they were shocked, there was a spike in the stress response, the hypothalamus, part of the brain. And when they had a stranger who was holding their hand, it came down a little bit. When they had a loved one holding their hand, it came down dramatically. Connection heals us. It's so important to us to relax our nervous systems, to help us feel more courage, more inspiration. It has everything to do with focus and productivity. And not only that, it's contagious. Plenty of studies have come out. You might remember the one in the New York Times that came out that said obesity is contagious up to three degrees. So your friend's friend's friend is eating a ton of fast food and an obese, that gives that person permission to and that person and that person. So there's three degrees of contagion around that. And then they found the same thing for loneliness and the same thing for happiness. So there's a contagion to our emotions. Helen Keller said, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition be inspired, and success be achieved. But it's through that trial and suffering that we get the greatest strength from the people around us. So here's my tip to you. I want you to think about who you spend most of your time with. Who do you make the most contact with through the day, whether it's messaging or it's texting or whether it's on social media or whether it's in person or whether it's on the phone or on a, on a video messaging app of some kind? Who do you make the most contact with? So take out a list a pen and paper or open up a document on your computer, do a, do one to 10 and make a list from top to bottom. The people I spend most time with are on the top, the bottom, the least time with. After you're done with that, so you can pause this if you're doing it right now, but after you're done with that, I want you to rate everyone on a scale of one to 10 from nourishing and inspiring to depleting. Nourishing and inspiring are 10, depleting is one and everywhere in between. And yes, some people are more nourishing and inspiring at some times and more depleting at others. Do the best you can. Make an average. This is going to give you a snapshot of the energy around you. Do you need to find more mentors? Do you need to bring other people into your life who are going to be more inspiring and nourishing to you? Do you need to find those people? That's the whole reason I created the Mindful Living Collective was to funnel all those people together who wanted to live with more focus to live the to be the change they wanted to see in their lives. And and so we can we can ask ourselves do we need to find those people or if those people are there already in my life do I need to make more contact with them? And if they're there and you are making more contact with them just appreciate that and send them a whole bunch of appreciation and gratitude. It's going to make you feel a whole lot better and make them feel a whole lot better. So do that. So that's the that's the tip I want to give you. Do that practice. And there's another practice I want to give you that will help you feel that connection. And so if you're ready, get in a comfortable position. Take a couple deep breaths. Straight spine.
Notice your body sitting here. If there's any tension or holding, see if you can allow that to soften or do a gentle stretch. Notice your body naturally breathing. And I want you to take a moment to think of a person that you really care about or an animal. Person that you find to be nourishing and inspiring for you. This could be someone you haven't even met, a mentor who inspires you from afar. I want you to see them in their best moment. Consider what it is about this person that lifts you up, inspires you. I want you to express a sense of gratitude and kind intentions towards them. May you be happy. May you be healthy in body and mind. May you feel safe and protected. May you live with ease. Beginning now to just turn that towards yourself. With that same intention you had towards that person you cared about. May I too be happy. Feel safe and protected. Focus on what matters in my life. Get better and better at focusing on what matters. And do it with ease. Imagining you're both sitting there next to each other, looking over onto the entire world. Breathing in, breathing in that kind intention towards yourself. as if it's coming into your body and your cells are drinking it in on the inhalation. Breathing out and imagining that spreading out throughout the entire world, your friends, your family, their connections and their connections until it spreads out through the entire world. And then noticing how you're feeling physically, emotionally. Noticing if there is a sense of connection that's there. If there is, have it and enjoy it. It's a great support 
for you. If not, and you're distracted, your mind was cluttered, no, this takes practice and repetition, no problem. Keep coming back, bringing it into your life over and over and over again. Just like learning how to ride a bike, it'll get easier and easier. So finally, as we wrap up this lesson, I want you to really remember that wherever your focus goes, it invites an energy to flow. So you want to visualize what you want, be grateful for it, appreciate it. You want to know why you want it. Make sure to put that in your calendar and wherever you write that activity, why you're, why you're wanting it, why you're wanting What's the purpose behind it? You want to take consistent action. You want to remember that there's difficult moments and have great self-compassion for yourself to be more resilient during that time. You want to find your tribe for inspiration. Connect with the people that are going to support you the most. Sense into the connection that's there. As Arthur Ashe once said, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. This is my wish for you as you move forward. Continue to do this course over and over and over again, as much as you want. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another program.